right, good morning, everybody. Well, I have 10 o'clock, so we are gonna go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us for today's uh, virtual field trip out of Oxbow Nature Study Area, where we will be meeting Amanda and learning all about the different types of habitats that we have out of Oxbow. Uh, my name is Jessica and I'm a wildlife educator with the Nevada Department of Wildlife, and we will be meeting Amanda shortly and AmeriCorps educator out at Oxbow. So throughout the program, uh, there will be polls that we will be asking you, and you can also um, interact with us through the Q&A box. So if you have any questions at the, uh, throughout the program, at the bottom of your screen, you should see the Q&A box. You can also feel free to use the chat to communicate with us as well. If for any reason you have to leave early today and you don't get to watch the whole field trip, all of these are recorded and we put them up on our Nevada Department of Wildlife YouTube page and there's a whole playlist of all of our other virtual field trips. So you can just go there and check them out. So today we are out at Oxbow. So if you've never been to Oxbow, it is in Reno, Nevada and it's um, just over a mile and a half west of downtown Reno. So the address is 3100 Dickerson Road um, and it's a beautiful 22 acre nature study area right on the Truckee River. We have all kinds of wildlife that we would love for you to come visit. So again, that address is 3100 Dickerson Road. If you do come visit, just a couple things to note that there are uh, no pets allowed in the park and no bikes as well. Uh, just because this is a nature study area and we try to reserve this area for our wildlife. And with that, I'm going to give it over to Amanda, who is going to introduce us to a couple of the habitats that can be found out here at Oxbow. All right, hello everyone. Like Jess said, uh, my name is Amanda. I am a wildlife educator uh, working with the Nevada Department of Wildlife through AmeriCorps. Um, and today we're going to be learning all about habitats. So habitats are really awesome. They are basically a home for our animals. It has everything that they need to be able to survive. But what exactly is a habitat and what is it made out of? So a habitat has to, is, like I said, a home for our animals. So it's where they live, where they can be found. And it's made up of four key things. So the first one is actually going to be space. A lot of people forget about this one, but it is the most important because if we do not have enough space for our animals or our plants, they won't be able to survive. Um, a lot of the big trees that you see around me today are actually cottonwoods. And if I were to try to uproot one of these cottonwoods and plant it in a tiny little planter, it would not survive because they need so much space for the roots to be able to spread out um, so they can get all of the water and nutrients they need from the soil. And if I were to put it in a tiny planter, it would not have enough space for their roots. Or if I were to um, hopefully have an area for a mountain lion, uh, maybe I was planning on opening a zoo and I wanted to create a habitat for my mountain lion, I definitely would not keep that mountain lion in a tiny little shoe box. I would wanna make sure that it has plenty of space where it can roam um, and exercise and uh, basically be able to be, live its life the best way it could. So here at Oxbow, we definitely have plenty of space. We have 22 acres and we have a ton of animals that are constantly moving through um, Oxbow Nature Study Area. So space is our first thing. Our second thing is going to be water. Our animals need a source of water. Um, sometimes this comes in the form of rain. Sometimes this is in the form of a river like we have that runs alongside Oxbow. Um, other times this comes from the plants that they eat. So some animals will eat seeds and the moisture in those seeds is how they get most of their water. So a lot, some animals don't even drink water. They just get it from their food. And onto food, food is going to be our next one, our number three uh, of things that make up a habitat. So food might consist of a few different things. Um, you might be an animal that really eats things like pine cones or berries or nuts. Um, or maybe you're an animal that has adapted to be able to eat things like insects. Um, we have like flies, uh, little centipedes, things like that. So we have tons of animals that eat different things here at the park from seeds, nuts, bugs, all the way up to other animals. And we're gonna be talking about some of those uh, food items that we can find in our different habitats today. And the last thing, uh, number four is going to be shelter. So some animals like birds will build nests um, and that will be their form of shelter. And other animals will do things like dig burrows or might peck holes in trees where they will then um, be able to escape the elements. So if it rains, our animals definitely need a way to be able to escape that 
or if it gets too cold, they need a way to be able to escape the cold as well. So today we are starting out in our meadow habitat. And one of the things you might notice about the habitat around me is that it has a ton of grass. And then around this grass is a ton of big trees. Um, so meadows are gonna be open areas of grasses um, and sometimes flowers that are then surrounded by bigger trees like cottonwoods and sometimes willows. So looking at one of our grasses, um, this might not look like an excellent source of food to you or me. However, it definitely is to a lot of our animals that live here. Um, these are going to be mainly our smaller things like our rodents. So our mice, our voles. Um, and I'm gonna have Jess go ahead and share a slide that shows one of the types of grasses we might have growing around here, as well as an animal that will eat it, which is a vole. So a vole is very similar to a mouse. Um, it has like a shorter tail, but they basically eat the same thing. Uh, they'll also eat insects though as well. So our voles and our mice are gonna be scurrying around the ground here, collecting all of the seeds from the grasses. And then our, things like our cedar waxwings, um, which was also on that slide, are going to be eating things that are up in our trees, like the seeds from our cottonwoods, or um, our other trees like our, I think we have bitter cherry and choke cherry that also grow through here, um, as well as our Russian olive, which is invasive. So invasive means that it does not belong here, um, but it does grow here anyways. Um, someone planted it a while back. So we have a ton of um, our Russian olives as well. And the seeds from these trees provide animals like our um, cedar wax wings, our robins, other birds with food to be able to eat. Now, Jess is going to share with you a video of one of our squirrels scurrying around uh, our meadow looking for some food. Now, as you're watching this video, you might notice that our squirrel keeps stopping every so often. He freezes, looks around, tries to see what's around them. And that's actually because while they're looking for food, they have to keep, be on the lookout because they are also food. Yes, our squirrels and our mice and our rodents are also a source of food. So one animal that might eat them is going to be our uh, things like our owl. So here we have a great horned owl and they love to eat smaller rodents and birds. They'll also eat things like skunks. Um, so that's one of our predators that we can find here. However, Jess is going to share a slide that shows some other predators um, that we also find here. So one of them is going to be a red-tailed hawk, which is another bird of prey. Um, so it's in the same group kind of as our owl. And our, uh, that hawk is actually eating a Western gray squirrel, which we have tons of that live here in the park. And then our small scurry, scurrying things like our squirrels and our mice are also going to attract um, things like coyotes. Um, so these are two of our predators that we can often find hanging out around here at the park. Because like I said, our squirrels, our mice, our rabbits are all sources of food for other animals. So here in our meadow, we have many sources of food from seeds, insects, um, other animals, uh, and also some sources of shelter. So Jess is going to share with you a quick photo. And in those photos, you can see uh, one of our animals has created a den. So this is a little hole in the ground. This is their form of shelter. This is how they're going to escape the elements. If it starts to rain or if it gets too cold, they're going to go into their dens. Um, and then there also is a woodpecker hole. So like I said, we have a ton of these big trees around me. And these big trees are perfect spaces for our woodpeckers to drill little holes where they can then have their babies. Um, they'll make nests inside of these holes or they might just drill holes to try to get the insects living inside of the trees. So our trees are both a source of shelter and a source of food for many birds. All right, so I'm going to turn it over to Jess who's gonna hang out with you guys and ask you a couple of questions until we get to our next habitat. Perfect, thanks, Amanda. All right, everyone. So we are gonna have a couple of fun quiz questions of a guessing game of what's that habitat? So any moment uh, you should see a poll that is launching on your screen. And our question is, 
whose tracks are leading into this burrow. So in the back, uh, you can kind of see in between those, those sticks and things, there's a little burrow in there. So who do you think those tracks in the snow are that are leading into this burrow? So our options are A, black bear, B, raccoon, three, a skunk, or D, a coyote. All right, I see some mixed answers coming in. Oh, we're split 50-50 right now, so go ahead and get your guesses in. Let me give you about 10 more seconds to get your guess in. All right, I'm gonna end the poll and go ahead and share the results. So we had 71% of folks say it is a black bear and 29% of folks say it is a coyote. And it is actually neither of those. So it is actually going to be the raccoon. So raccoons have um, super cute tracks. So they have uh, five fingers, kind of like humans do. So you can see them in that picture. And so when you see them in the snow, you're gonna see their front hand print that looks very similar to a human hand, just quite a bit smaller. And then their back toes, uh, we're gonna see a little bit longer elongated foot. And our next question, I'm gonna go ahead and launch, launch another poll is, can you spot an animal in this meadow? So I'm gonna go ahead and launch our second poll of, can you spy any animals in the middle of this meadow? All right, I'll give you about 10 more seconds to get your answers in. It seems I did not fool anybody on this one. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and share our results. Everybody got it 100% right. Yes, if you look closely in the middle there, there is a uh, cute little mule deer popping their head out of that meadow. So there's a, a little bit more zoomed in picture. And with that, I will give it back to Amanda. All right, hello, hello. So now we are in our willow tunnel. So our willow tunnel is gonna be the next habitat we talk about. Um, our willow tunnel, you can notice, is a bit different than our meadow. Um, we might have some grasses that are growing along the sides, but they're not really everywhere. And you can see all around me is just a ton of willows that are kind of entangled together. Um, you can't really see through them. So our willows are actually an excellent source of shelter for so many different animals, mainly our smaller animals, like our bunnies, um, our ground dwelling things like our quail, uh, which are a small bird that run along the ground. So our quail will also often escape into the willows to try to hide from predators and things. And our birds also love to build nests um, in our willow tunnels as they are so dense that it's hard for things like um, bir bigger birds of prey, like our hawks, to be able to find them. Um, and it also hides them away from things like squirrels. Now, as for food, our willow tunnels have so many food. The willow itself is actually a great source of food for things like our deer who might not just live in the willow tunnel, but will travel between different uh, habitats, like our willow tunnel, moving over to our fields, um, moving over to our wetlands to get water. Um, so they do tend to move around a bunch. Um, one source of food that we can often find here is going to be our woods rose. So you can see it is a little flower. And when it is flowering, it is an excellent source of nectar for things like our butterflies and our bees. So we do get things like swallowtails and monarch butterflies that come through here, um, which love these flowers because they are an excellent source of food for them. Now, after they, the, uh, these flowers are done flowering, they'll then turn into what is called a rose hip, which is kind of like a small berry. And these berries are a favorite food of things like our black bear and our skunk. So I'm gonna have Jess go ahead and share a photo of you, a photo with you of our black bear and a skunk that we did catch here in the park. So you might be thinking a black bear, that is rather large. Um, does it live in, the, in, the, in the, this habitat full time? Does it live in the meadow habitat full time? Well, actually things like our bears have a rather large home range. So a home range is an area that they're traveling from and to. So their den might actually be miles away from here. And they just walk all the way along the river trying to find sources of food, which might be our rose hips um, when they turn into uh, the little berries in the fall. 
Another source of food is going to be our blackberries. So here I have um, what's left of a blackberry. So you can see this is where the berries were. They've all kind of been dried up and eaten by birds. Um, but this is what the leaves look like. And a lot of times you don't really want to grab things uh, that are growing fruit like blackberries or our rose hips um, because they do have thorns. And these plants have, have developed these thorns to try to make the animal only eat the fruit. Now our animals only eat the fruit so that way when they eat it, uh, they spread the seeds from the fruit. So they are effectively planting these seeds in other places. So a source of water that we might find through here um, is going to be the streams that run alongside willow tunnels. Willows love water. They need a lot of water to be able to survive. So they're gonna grow in areas that are often really close to wetland habitats, which is actually gonna be the next habitat that we talk about. So, so far we've talked about the source of water, the streams near our um, willow tunnel. We've talked about shelter, which is just the willows themselves, which are easy spaces for our animals to be able to escape into. And we've talked about their food, um, which is going to be things like the willows themselves, which our deer love to eat, or our berries and rose hips that will also grow here. And then we also kind of talked on space and how some animals need a ton of space to be able to survive. So they're going to be going to different habitats um, to try to get all of their needs satisfied. All right. And with that, we are going to go ahead and head over to our wetland habitat. Um, and I'll turn it back over to Jess. Perfect. Thanks, Amanda. We'll see you in a moment. All right, everyone. I've got a couple of more quiz questions for you that I will put up. So our next one is, can you tell me what this animal has been eating by looking at their scat? So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll that you should now see on your screen. So go ahead and see if you can guess what is in this animal's scat. So our options are A, grasses, B, berries and seeds, C, small rodents, or D, leaves and twigs. So I'll give you a few moments to see if you can identify by looking at this scat what this animal has been eating. Scat is a great thing for scientists uh, to use in order to study animals. We can learn where they've been recently and we can often tell what they have been eating. All right, I'm going to end the polling and share the results. Everybody got it correct. Yes, you can see the remnants of the berries and the seeds in that scat. And we have a bonus question for this one as well is, can you tell me what animal has left that scat behind? So I'm gonna put up one more poll. Can you tell me what animal might have left this scat behind? So our options are A, mule deer, B, coyote, C, raccoon, or D, black bear. What animal do you think left this big pile of scat behind? All right, I'll give you about 10 more seconds to get your votes in. All right, and I'll go ahead and end it and share the results. So we have a guess for mule deer and a guess for coyote, but the majority say it is a black bear. And that would be the correct answer is this was our black bear that came uh, through the park eating those blackberries or rose hips or all kinds of different fruit that we have in the park. Perfect. I will give it back over to you, Amanda. Hello and welcome to our wetland habitat. Um, this is where we often have large bodies of water. So our wetland habitats are going to have a ton of water because we have things that are adapted to live in the water here. So our wetland habitat is going to be um, the water itself, as well as the area around it. So our water is obviously uh, plentiful and our source of food is going to be so many different things. Um, one source of food that we may see are our cattails. So right here, I have a cattail growing. Um, there's some more growing in the water behind me. And cattails are an awesome source of food, not only for animals that might live here, but also for us. They are completely edible from the leaves to the root to the flower. Um, before it goes to seed, so before it might turn into a poof ball. Um, but they are also excellent sources of food for our animals here, one of which is going to be the muskrat or the beaver. So Jess is going to share with you a photo, um, a series of photos, 
One of them is going to be of cattails and our muskrats. So that's one source of food. We have another source of food, which is going to be duckweed, which are these itty, 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 bitty little leaves um, that are floating on our water surface. And that is the favorite food for our ducks. Um, so things like our mallards or our wood ducks, they love to eat duckweed. And they'll both our muskrat and our, um, and our duck will also eat things like macroinvertebrates, where our, which are little bugs. And on that slide, you'll see a little macroinvertebrate that actually loves to eat algae. So the slimy stuff that grows on rocks, um, that's where we can often find our macroinvertebrates. And like I said, our beavers and our ducks also love to eat macroinvertebrates. And so do things like our um, frogs that live here, as well as um, fish that might be hanging out in our waters. So here is a um, up close look of the duckweed. As you can see, it's just kind of little, uh, little leaves that are just floating on the water surface. And one cool thing about duckweed is it's actually the world's smallest flower. Um, you can't even see it really with your naked eye. You have to get a microscope. So that's kind of cool. And then another source of food that we might have around here um, is going to be wood. So we have a ton of willows, um, cattails, cottonwoods that are all growing around here that our beaver loves to eat. Um, they'll eat this outside portion and then use the inside portion to build their dams with, which are little walls of uh, little walls of sticks and mud that help stop up water. So we've talked about our water, we've talked about our food, and now let's talk a little bit about shelter. So a lot of times animals that live in the water, um, they'll escape into the water, like our frogs to try to escape predators, um, things that might be hunting them along the edge. So things like our um, river otters might try to hunt them or our skunks even try to hunt small amphibians sometimes like frogs. And so they'll just dive into the water to escape animals that can't necessarily um, go into the water as well. So the water is a great source of shelter as well as a beaver's lodge. So a beaver's lodge is a giant pile of sticks and mud, which is a little mud hut that they build in the middle of our ponds um, that give them shelter and allow them to be able to escape and hide because they are nocturnal. So they don't like to come out during the day. They'll instead hide in their um, little lodges throughout the, throughout the day and then come out at night. So this is where they're going to go to sleep as well as escape from things like snow or um, too hot of weather or just sunlight because they are nocturnal. So, so far we have talked about um, our source of water, which is all around us, which it typically comes from rainfall or runoff. So water is running here from somewhere else and it's collecting in these giant bodies. Um, or we, and then we also talked about our food, which would be things like our duckweed, um, our cat, cattails, our wood um, for our beavers. And then we also talked a little bit about shelter, like our beaver lodges and the dens um, or in the water itself being an excellent source of shelter for many different animals. So I'm going to turn it back over to Jess, who's going to uh, give you guys one last poll and then we'll come back here and close out. Awesome. Thanks, Amanda. All right, everyone, we've got one final question for you is in the middle of this habitat, can you spot the beaver lodge? So can you see it anywhere? So I've got a poll that's gonna be coming up on the screen. Let me know if you think that you can see the beaver lodge. It is kind of camouflage. It's a little bit difficult to find. All right, we'll give you about 10 more seconds to get your guesses in. Let me know if you think you can see the beaver lodge out in the middle of our pond. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the polling. We have most people that says, yes, you can definitely see it. And we've got some, I think so. So it is right there in the middle, that pile of sticks that's poking out of the cattails. And there's actually um, that little black spot is a red winged blackbird that is hanging out um, on top of the beaver lodge. So the beaver creates all kinds of amazing habitat, not only for itself by creating that dam and creating the pond, but it creates habitat for so many other animals like ducks and ducklings, these red winged blackbirds, herons, all kinds of other animals like to use this pond as well. So thank you so much, everybody, for following along. And um, if anybody has any questions that are brewing, go ahead and put them in the Q&A or the chat. And I'm going to give it back to Amanda to wrap us up for today.
like Jess said, thank you, thank you all for joining us. Uh, so today we talked about what a habitat is, how it's somewhere that an animal lives, and how it provides them with food, water, shelter, and space which they need to be able to survive. So with that, I'll go ahead and open it up to any questions that might be coming in in the Q&A. Perfect, thanks so much, Amanda. Uh, let's see, I don't see any open questions that we haven't gotten to. So anybody, if you have any questions about other animals that might live in these habitats or other sources of food or water, anything like that, go ahead and let us know. Um, and before you leave today, if you do have a moment, uh, a Survey is going to automatically pop up on the screen. If you have a couple of moments to fill it out, uh, we'd love to know what you thought about our program today. Um, but I don't see any other questions. Uh, so when you registered, you did get our email. So if you think of anything later, you can feel free to shoot us over an email later. Um, but with that, thanks so much, Amanda. We really appreciate it. Of course. Bye, everyone. <laughs>